Now it's time for step nine, setting up the advanced configuration settings. You can see here that we've got the identification as tower. That's when we go HTTP colon slash slash tower. In my case, I want to call it unraid. I want it to show up that way on my network. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, comments, I'll just call it unraid server, and my work group is category five. Generally speaking, your work group can be anything. I'm also going to set my MAC address on my DHCP so that the IP address of my Unraid server gets automatically assigned, but to a static IP address based on DDWRT using a static DHCP. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. You might not need that, but I like to be able to control the IP addresses on my network. So now, after rebooting my Unraid server, I'm not going to go to HTTP colon slash slash tower. I'm going to go to slash slash Unraid, because I've renamed that device on the network. All right, so now that we've rebooted our Unraid server and we've reconnected, we can go back into settings and change our spin down delay if we'd like. The default again is one hour, but uh, this basically, in, in essence, uh, tells Unraid how long to wait before it spins down, stops spinning. Uh, your, your hard drives, the ones that are not, uh, not currently being accessed. Of course, once, uh, once you try to access those drives again, they'll spin back up, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, you'll be able to set up an NTP server, which is basically able to uh, get the current time for your time zone off the web, and that's kind of a cool feature for keeping your system clock up to date and uh, set perfectly as well. So that is really all it takes to set up an Unraid server, and uh, that leads us to step number 10, which is to enjoy, to sit back and relax and have some peace of mind uh, knowing that your data is being stored redundantly on an Unraid server. You can find Unraid online at www.lime-technology.com. For Category 5 Technology TV, I'm Robbie Ferguson.